All right, small bit in After Dark for episode 10.31. Um, this is a few news stories that we didn't get to. Here's one of them. So, Mike, we were talking about in the show, or we, were, we missed in the show, North Korea, Ukraine, Russia, and intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Intrigue. What was going on there? So, quite a few things. Um, over the past couple of months, North Korea has been testing some new missiles that have made world leaders worldwide freak out. So, uh, that if you can, let's just go ahead and start playing this video. They have a new rocket called Hwasong-12, which has a new type of engine that isn't previously based on any engines that they have. Now, a report from a British think tank blames Ukraine for this engine because the engine is supposedly too advanced for the Rodong engines that they've been using on the past, which are based off of Scud missiles. Now, Ukraine has been calling BS on this. They're saying that, you know, there's no way that these engines could have come from them because they haven't been manufacturing the engines for since 1994. What you see on screen, though, is the R-27 ICBM that Russia developed back in the 60s. Well, actually starting in the 50s. And the North Korea bought one of those missiles, and this is the Hoswang-12 uh, that you see on screen now. They bought one of those missiles off of two kind of corrupt design bureaus called Isayev and Makayev back in 1993. So they've been working for over 20 years to convert these engines into something that they can build themselves, not just use whatever inventory they were able to get their hands on. There's estimations that they had anywhere between three to four R-27 rockets. They also got a bunch of Scud missiles, which they had been working on with Iran to develop into their different series of rockets that we're more familiar with. And they also got their hands on an R-16 rocket. And the engines and... The whole thing with this whole British think tank thing, though, is that the engine that it compares it to is a two-nozzle engine called the RD-250, which uh, the Soviet Union used on the, the, the R-16 rocket and as well as the Cyclone rocket. And what you can see on your screen is this two-nozzle engine, they arrange it so there's actually six nozzles, but the, on the... the, on the excuse me, the Cyclone rocket that you see on the right hand of your screen there, there's three of these engines with the dual chamber. Now, this, this British think tank, this, this, this report uh, published by Michael Elliman, who actually is a missile expert who helped to, to, to help in, in the um, uh, decommissioning of several ICBMs in the late 90s, he has surmised that they're using a single nozzle version of that engine. And... The whole thing with this is it doesn't quite make sense. The size isn't quite right, and it does use the same type of fuel that the Huang, Hwasong-12, and what you're seeing on screen now is the Hwasong-14 that they have been testing. And with this, it just, there's too much about this that doesn't quite make sense. Ukraine, again, has called BS on this entire report and have looked into their inventory of rockets that they have, and there are no uh, RD-252 engines that are missing. They have nine of these left in three Cyclone rockets that are just kind of sitting in storage. And Yushmash, the, the developer of this, uh, according to their official statements, all of the, the RD-250 and 252 engines they produced were sent to Russia long ago. So it's more likely that whatever source of this engine was was way back in that illegal purchase from Isayev and Makayev that North Korea did back in 1993. And there's just so much about this that is, is a bit confusing. And it turns out that... Michael Elliman, the, the, the writer of this report, might have even some Russian connections. And so there's all sorts of weird kind of allegations going back and forth at this is some sort of Russian conspiracy to give themselves a reason to go in and uh, continue the invasion of Ukraine. And interestingly, Russia has deployed troops to both the Ukrainian border and the North Korean border. So there's a lot of different things going on with this. But what I think is more likely is that this engine is not the RD-250, but is based off of the R-6 rocket that they got. Here's one in engine that we have here that this is a much more closer uh, uh, configuration to what North Korea is using now. The rocket you see on screen is the MRUR-100, or in other words, the mini UR-100 rocket. And the type of engine that it has is much more closer to the size that is on the, um, uh, the Hwasong-14 rocket. The engine that you see there is the RD-268. But there's another engine which they, with North Korea, definitely 
recently got their hands on called the RD0205, which is the upper stage of that R16 rocket. And they could easily have converted this engine, which is an upper stage engine, to be fired at sea level. So, I mean, there's way more likelihood that they got these engines from that original purchase way back in 1993, and there hasn't been any sort of backroom deals from either Ukraine or Russia in the past couple of years. So that's what's going on with this. There's definitely a lot of drama, and as things come out, hopefully we'll be able to talk about it more. But yeah, definitely some scary stuff, and tensions are very high at the moment between the United States, North Korea, and all the other world players that North Korea might actually have an intercontinental, a true inter continental ballistic missile and could actually follow through with some of their threats. But to be honest, in my personal opinion, and that's all it is, just my personal opinion, I really think that North Korea just wants to have a deterrent. But anyway, that's what's been going on with that. So exasperated, Space Mike. You were, you were, you were passionate yeah. about that one. You, you got into that I one. Am. I am. I feel breathe. so bad for the Ukrainians, man. After this whole Crimean thing, the Ukrainians have been suffering so bad. But Yushmash is, is staying alive. They've got all these different deals. They have that new Canadian deal to launch their Cyclone 5 rockets from there. And uh, the sea launch deal is, is, is in the process of, of furthering along. And they'll be producing the engines for the, the Zenit sea launch version. So they have things going on, but they've been struggling really hard ever since the whole Crimean fiasco. So yeah, I, I'm definitely rooting for you, Shmosh, and I want to see more stuff happen. Well, thank you so much, Space Mike. For more space news, tune in to tomorrow, Orbit 10, episode 31 from this last week to see what's happened uh, relevant this last week. And then we've also got every Saturday at 1800 coordinating Universal Time, our live shows. So make sure to tune into those live. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.